ITE ITE student ITE 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 Over the years, an unknown fear has been implanted amongst ITE students. Society has always thought that ITE students impart a negative influence towards the people around them. IT students are known to cause trouble in the eyes of the society, mostly known for smoking, causing fights, stealing, and generally being dropouts. This image has sparked many stigmas around IT, both in their students and their education system. Uh, I feel like it's a school for students who didn't really do academically well for O or N levels. Actually, it's kind of like split line down the middle. I would say both, there are many ways you can describe an IT student, in fact. They don't really excel in like those kind of mainstream uh, math, science, then they go to this kind. They, need, uh, they learn about uh, skills so that they can uh, move on and then like find a job maybe and then like get on with uh, life. Like. The first thing that comes to my mind would be videos of students fighting. I think it was one about like them fighting the toilet or something. Yeah, I think they're quite naughty. Maybe I don't know from just from the video lah. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I would say sometimes they are like underprivileged. Um, sometimes they're not given a chance. But there are also those who um, kind of like uh, stain the name ITE. They actually put a very bad impression of ITE because of their character and style. Yeah, there is. Um, there are different kind of people, and they have different uh, styles that kind of put the name to ID in a way. Um, I don't think all of them should be labeled that way. I don't think they should have a label, lah. To be honest, because it's only like a specific group of students who are like like that, lah. I mean, there are a few cases we we see that like the IT people like uh, they do some. Uh, some things that and like we can see on social media and all those but I believe that we can't really label them it's quite unfair for them now because we can't really uh, use uh, look at this group of people and like we think that the whole school is like this it's very unfair rather than appearance I think it's more on behavior because like uh, I usually all the bad things that I hear about IT students are like more on what they do. Like for example, the slashing case that was posted online and things like that. Uh, similar to my first answer, there are like two different kind, two different, actually many different type of IT students. There are actually those who um, have actually tried their best or feel that studying isn't kind of like for them. So they are more into practical stuff, which is, which is why they actually enter into ITE. But there are, I would believe there are those who have actually um, really just couldn't make it or just couldn't be bothered to study hard, which is why they, are, they actually become an intake of ITE. So um, there's actually like many different people and not exactly, you know. Yeah, so basically like you get, I get the bad impression because of most, um, mainly based on action. I feel that yeah, they do because um, when they after they graduate from ITA, if they really do well, I think because we are like a is it democratic society, <laughs> is it like the where, where they get like fairs then like if eh no that's not the word okay anyway if they work hard they will get um they will be able to um pursue whatever they want I guess yeah and then they do get chances lah I feel I've read somewhere yeah in a. a in a few years back, la, I think is they are treated quite... But I mean, I don't really know about them, la, but from what I hear, they are treated unequally. La. They are technically, politically ranked lower than everyone else. Like for example, CJC and Poly, they are, they are like automatically put below them. Because for example, like um, for O-levels, they, they require the lowest requirements. And it's like... I heard stories that uh, the bosses will of course like treat the one with better grades, better. But uh, I believe that in uh, in the coming years, uh, in these these few years, uh, it's getting better because uh, the society is uh, uh, how to say they are they are learning more. They are they they are giving more chances and they are improving uh, improving the 
the mentality la, given given to the IT people. I feel like uh, they are just a school that might that are for the ones that are, uh, that might learn slower as compared to poly and JC students. But they we are all learning together, so I don't think that has been properly. Um, they are not fed accurately. In February 2017, CCTV footage was posted on Facebook showing an IT student beating another student up in the toilet, with a few other students watching at the side. The bully then proceeds to threaten the victim later in the video. This is one of the few negative cases that have been brought up by social media. To find out more about ITE and its education system, we interviewed an ex-lecturer of their aerospace technology course. He was a lecturer for five years up until 2017 and is currently based in the UAE where he lectures the undergraduate program for aircraft maintenance and repair. Sharing his opinions on IT students being labelled as gangsters and bad kids by society, he mentioned that he had actually dealt with the home team for several offences done by his students. However, he feels that majority of IT students are actually well behaved and do listen well to him in class. And he also feels that public perception can change on a dime, so it only takes a few incidents to change the public's view. The public can normally be manipulated by social and mainstream media to believe that information provided to them has negative and positive effects. In an online survey we conducted, 49.1% of participants stated that they received news about ITE from social media, and 63.6% from mainstream media. This in a way adversely affects the image of ITE. Social media wise, uh, well, normally I just scroll through Facebook and then I'll see something regarding ID and I'll be like, mm, this, like, the usual thing I always see, but uh, it's like so common to the point that I find it hard to believe. Unless I actually read it from the papers or the TV, uh, like a news report or something, then maybe I'll actually start to believe in those words. To a certain extent, I believe that social media, it might be a one-sided one side of the story because it's uh, it might be just one person holding on to his phone and like videoing this part whereas on the other part something else is happening but the person is not recording it lah mm, I think I will believe uh, I guess I will believe social media when it comes to like real uh, like footages kind of thing because I mean if it's some random person who like takes a photo of takes the video of like them fighting or anything it's pretty like um, it's like I won't say that the mainstream media's news is fake, but like the in mainstream media, it that st stuff tend to be censored. So like um, not everything, not everything is shown about IT like It's they show only like one side of things. Okay, I th I think I would tend to believe what's on social media more because like it's from people <laughs> with <laughs> firsthand experience. And of course, uh, the mainstream media, the, bro the broadcast media, we, we believe that it's more trustworthy because uh, whatever the uh, news readers say, you will prove read before it's uh, broadcasted. But then, in, in a certain extent, uh, we never know. The government, the people may, 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 may twist the facts before they, they broadcast to the people. So, in a way, I mean, we still need to research uh, before really like come down to a conclusion whether can we believe any of these two media yeah. uh, rather than like online articles because like um let's be honest uh, i don't we don't really look at the news as much as we look at online nowadays at, yeah so i think uh what we hear on social media might be more believable and more attractive to us as compared to what we see online the only way for the public to be able to understand life in ITE is through the influence of social and mainstream media. As the public blindly trusts this system, they can be easily manipulated by it. The influence in social and mainstream media does not only affect the students, but the lecturers as well. When asked on how he felt before coming into ITE to teach, he actually mentioned that he had worked with ITE graduates when he was in the Air Force as an engineer.
so he knew perfectly well what he was up against. He also mentioned that if you weed out a few bad apples, these graduates are able to function in the same capacity as those who come from polytechnics and junior colleges, some even performing better. Social and mainstream media has affected Singapore's view towards ITE students. In an online survey we conducted, 71% of participants stated that they would choose not to attend ITE, with reasons ranging from social stigma to their parents discouraging it. This perception started way back when ITE was known as the Vocational and Industrial Training Board by the older generation. It was well known for academically deprived students ending up there, with those who were academically inclined looking down at them. Ever since its humble beginnings, ITE has been constantly making changes and improving its education system, forming it into what it is today. However, Singapore has a culture of overvaluing academic achievements, placing much emphasis on the certificate and theory of education rather than the actual skills and potential a person possesses. Finally, we asked him what he thinks about the IT teaching system compared to those overseas, whether there were any similarities or differences. He then mentioned that the management of the courses and training equipment is comparable to the college that he's currently teaching in, and that the only hiccup is that lecturers are caught up with too much administration and lab maintenance. A similar system can be found in Germany with their renowned apprenticeship scheme that lasts for 3 to 12 months, where students choose to be placed under a master's tutelage and are paid during their time under the scheme. These students still attend classes at a vocational school, but the importance of hands-on learning is still reiterated. With its achieved success, other countries such as Canada and Switzerland have adopted the system, whereas Singapore is starting to lean towards it. This shows how much a vocational education can achieve, being on par or even higher than the standard education route. Furthermore, 90% of participants from our survey agreed that ITE students will be successful, with majority crediting the practical skills they learned during their time there as the main reason for their success. Apart from academics, ITE focuses more on the practical and skill-based learning aspects rather than its theoretical counterpart. For example, certain courses need plenty of experiences and hands-on learning, such as culinary, beauty therapy, filmmaking, and more. Yes, I apply it, and I try to apply it because the industry have their own techniques, their own way of doing things. So I try to learn what the school teaches me and what they do. Sometimes they don't match, but I try to adapt at every situation. Um, I applied straight away uh, once I started working outside. Definitely what I learned in IT is actually what I need to start working outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, I mean like uh, whatever that I learned from IT itself and um, wherever I'm studying right now itself, they, they definitely there's a, I applied a lot of skills and also a lot of experience into what I'm doing right now. Be it whether I'm still studying or working outside, um, yeah, I'm st definitely still using a lot of things that I've actually taught from IT itself. Somewhat it was seamless, but was still inexperienced, but still have the basic knowledge to use my skills to for work, lah, basically. So right now, it's just still uh, getting more experience, lah, upgrading myself. Lah. It's easy for me to work in because of my personality. I'm really driven on doing things. I really love filmmaking, camera works, lighting. I really like to do it. So that's a bit easy for me, but to be the one that helping to set up the shot like taking things the cameras or the lens or the tripod it wasn't really for me no, not like for me like I, I like to do it but I prefer to like be the guy who like set up the shot or pull the focus or do the lighting wise you know yeah actually it was very easy I got the job before I graduate so, so I started a day before I graduate. So that tomorrow I graduate. Today I start work. I miss that graduation day because it's not important for me. Because that's how I roll. 
for my industry is actually based on contacts ah. So luckily I had been on internships to pass my contacts around ah. So basically I'm quite solid for for working ah, outside right now. I didn't have much. I just just went with the flow. I, I didn't see IT as a bad place to start with. I was thankful uh, because I'm I was in tech, normal tech. Uh, and I got a course which is uh, aerospace engineering during my night tech years. Uh, I'm currently in high night tech. Yeah, uh, I was th very thankful because I had a very good course. Uh, when I first got into IT, right, I hated it because um, uh, I felt really disappointed in myself to go into ITE instead of poly. Yeah. For me, it's just uh, going to another school. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, able to learn new and better things. Yeah, when I hate when I go into IT. Or Same as me, they were actually disappointed because like. Uh, my sister actually went into, um, they went. She went into poly, and like, um, a few of my cousins also went to JC, um, but like, I actually went into IDE. So, to my parents, I is like, I'm at a lower grade than my siblings and cousins. They were happy for me because, uh, both my parents were, in the aerospace industry, so like. Happy that that their son is also in the industry as well. Ah, uh, they are happy. Yeah, they are happy for me. Yeah, as long as you study, they are like yeah. And they are very supportive of me to continue and further my studies. They are hoping for me to go even higher, but actually, doesn't make sense for me right now. As to me and the way I see it, because I'm like twenty four, want to continue. Um. Studies is a bit too long for me. Oh, the reaction is neutral. Nothing. Yeah, they just oh, okay. IT. But actually, I'm happy with with IT with higher nitec. It's good platform, and my parents really support. Um, great fun, happy, n no sad moments. Yeah, never been sad before la. It's a mixture between good and bad. Because of the pace of the lessons, some lessons a bit dry, a bit slow. That's what I don't like. Some is really hype, especially in the final year. We keep doing videos year every week, day in day out. We start at eight, we finish late at night. That's the intensity that I love about filmmaking. It's I expected to be bad because firstly I hated ITE, but. Um, because I joined a course that I really wanted, so I really enjoyed myself in ITE and the lecturers and my classmates really helped me along the way also. Well, my past one year is actually quite fun. I love this course. It's the things I learned here is can apply to my everyday life also. My three years in ITE has been full of surprises and ha happiness. Ah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think it's very good. Ah. Uh, I think if I wouldn't have to be in ITE, I, I'm probably what I'm not what I am today. Yeah. So yeah, I think if I I I'm quite happy that I went into ITE lah. Yeah. So that period, especially the final year, really drives me more towards my passion. Unlike what we originally thought, the stigma placed on ITE no longer exists. Looking back on the results of our research, IT students are given the same opportunity as students from other routes such as junior college and polytechnic, with those in the workforce even acknowledging them to be amongst the best workers or colleagues they have ever met. And Singapore no longer perceives the school and its students negatively based on the few reported incidents over the years, coming to an understanding that these cases can happen anywhere and in any institution and are not unique to just ITE. Thus, we change our stand that the stigma placed on ITE no longer exists.